Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp. And today I'm going to show you two new products that Viviva just released. These were just put out on the website. I am going to break down what's new about them, what's different about them, everything you need to know kind of at home to decide if this is something that you need in your own art studio, if it's a good fit for you or not. I'm also going to talk about things that I like about Viviva and things that I would personally tweak, not just in these sets, but just generally so you can make a really good and informed decision around the products. Um, I am an ambassador. This isn't a sponsored video, but I am an ambassador to the brand. I have been for a long time. I think we've been demoing Viviva like version, five, six years or something. Like version one. Yeah, on the channel. And, and I've always loved the idea of this, but there's some important things that you need to know as a consumer or as a new artist or as an experienced artist about the products. And then also um, some exciting changes that they made because they really listen to their community. Uh, the owners of this company kind of were trying to address a personal need and this was how they did it. We last week, swatched out sets that I've had for a very long time. So you can see um, this is the old original set that was out. And um, I know we talk a lot about light fatness, but you can see that obviously hasn't really, it doesn't fade in like days, you know. So the first thing is the travel kit. This is the travel kit. Um, I, they do limited editions. Now they do very small production runs. So it's kind of important to know that um, sometimes things are in and then they're out. I know the wholesaler I buy from was out of them entirely. So, um, you know, the supplies are kind of, you've got to watch the website if they're out and then wait for them to get back in. So this has the nice Viviva colors. It has a magnetic closure. I did find I had to like kind of squeeze this in to make sure the magnetic closure worked, but it does. The set comes with the color sheets, a sketch pad um, and a water brush. That's a brush with the water inside the handle of the brush and then you kind of squeeze it out. And then also a pen here. And um, they didn't do a Viviva branded pen. They actually worked with a really good pen maker, which I thought was a smart move on their pace. It's water-based pigment, but it's also um, waterproof. And that was a big thing because you can't really do this stuff with I don't have a coffee cup, but I have now a craft of coffee. So first things that I liked, um, I really love these little color sheets. Uh, if you get them, you really need to pay attention to if a little piece of paper slips out or if it has this on the back. Um, that's why I put the video out on the Facebook page so you could see somebody open it and use it and assemble it. So there, this is your palette that comes with it. So you can mix colors on here and then you can wipe it clean and then mix colors. The colors are on little sheets. Look, you can say this belongs to, and you have these little colors. One way of swatching this particular paint company, and I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet so you can see this. The correct way to swatch it is to get this paint and then come across here. All right, so that's how you would swatch this one. So this has got crimson and they've got a deep pink. And what's nice is they used to be almost kind of the same color, but as we've been going, they've gotten to be different colors, which I do appreciate. We got some vermilion. There's 16 colors. <clears throat> so vermilion would be like your equivalent to a cad red light. Got a dusk orange, which is like a pyral orange. So can you see how we're swatching those? I just want you guys to see the colors as we go. You saw them over there, but you know, to know how to correctly swatch your card is important. There's the chrome yellow. So these particular swatches, what's amazing about them is that they're very vibrant. This is the yellow ochre. They're very vibrant. They're super saturated. They're also not light fast. What does that mean to you? It's not light fast. Well, that means that, that there isn't a permanence to the pigment in an archival sense. So when you see Van Gogh's paintings, how much have they faded over time, right? How light fast were his pigments? Did they hold their color? Some, some colors hold for, for hundreds of years and some colors fade out in a few years. Um, so these are wonderful, but they're not meant to be here archivally. The work you do with them isn't going to be saturated in the museum down the road. Um, and that's just something for you to think about on a satisfaction level they're so bright and so vivid how i like to think of it is this guys is that um 
I, when I was going to art school, I went for advertising art, and we used to talk about things being photograph ready. And we used um, alcohol markers, Prismacolors, which was the brand at the time because Copic wasn't out. And you never used alcohol markers for permanent art. You couldn't sell it to a collector because over time, over a period of 10 years, it would fade out. You would use it to create brightly saturated works to be photographed. And so these are like this. This is for your sketchbook. This is for fun. This is for joy. You wouldn't paint with these and then sell it to a client, right? You would paint with these and have fun and take a photograph and post it on social media, which let's be honest, that's what we're doing all the time anyways. This is the light green. This is the sap green. These colors are highly mixable. I do like that. I like these little sheets between them. They do work to keep them from getting messy. I haven't ever had problems with them being, you know, an issue in my purse. I really like the Viridian. It's a great color. My very favorite color in the whole line is Peacock Blue. It's just my very favorite color in their whole line. I am looking at maybe doing my own set of these that are in my Sherpa colors for the watercolor classes that we can do. And that conversation is actually going really well. I'm pretty excited. Thank you. All right. So Persian blue. Look how dark that is. You can almost like not know it's Persian blue. <laughs> Don't come back and wipe that down. So see how nice this is to swatch. I've got to get this activated there. And right, we got some violet. Little violet going. Come back on the swatch. And then we're down to the magenta, which is a real good Quinn magenta, and then a slate black. So this is that basic set. They have several sets. They've got a metallic set. They've got a spring set. And um, they have these sets. Right, so there we go. I'm using a Jasper Stardust watercolor brush here. So then this would store here, right? And this is actually, I'm pretty into because you can squeeze it fairly hard and the whole thing doesn't explode and it still releases water in kind of a controllable way. The point of this brush is if you can't carry water with you, you can activate the paint and you can paint with it. And then you just have a paper towel at the side to clean the brush off, which I did really like. I like the pen a lot. It was a pretty good fine nib. Um, had good ink flow. This, this company is a good pen company, so they're very reliable. The thing I would tweak was the paper. Um, the paper's good. It's fine. I painted something on it. I posted it up on the, you can see it here on the watercolor channel. It's a one minute video. I posted this up and I did this without taping down. I just went, I opened it up and I painted something with it. So before I talked to you guys about it, I could tell you if I liked it or not. And I do. And it's a 120 pound paper and it's certainly more than heavy enough for this. When I use this pad up, am I going to change it out for Fabriano? Yeah, yeah, I am. But perfectly fine for right now. So um, I don't know if I've missed any questions on this set. This is the travel set. Um, it is an unlimited edition section of the store. I, I, it would be great if it came in uh, options and colors and things like that, but this was the only one that I saw. Uh, I don't know how many they have in the edition. I just know from past experience that those editions are small. Are you there, John? I am. I'm going to pour my coffee now, if y'all don't mind. Because uh, I didn't get coffee before the show. You know, and I'm being cheeky about my hair. I know I haven't mentioned it. And <laughs> um, uh, Beth Mulligan, when you buy aqua brushes, you have to buy the better ones as economic ones fuzz out. I own Pentax. Yeah, you really do. And I was really pleased that they didn't cheap out on the aqua brush. It was a good aqua brush in the set. Because otherwise, what's the point? Early in the days, though, it was uh, fully just random. Because there were so many new aqua brush companies coming yeah. to the market. Yeah, you just kind of had to figure out as you went. But now there's some good aqua brushes out there. And they have good tips. And it's no longer the Wild West of brushes. I'll have that before you mm. use it. Use it and get paint on it and then eat that paint. All eat right. Paint. So that's something to think about. This is a great set. Um, the weight of it, just to let you guys also know, because that's important to me, is actually pretty light to me. It's about the weight of a paperback. Um, so it wasn't super heavy. Sometimes art supplies in your purse can get really heavy. I'm sure you've noticed. I carry a lot of art supplies with me, and my, my bags can get quite weighted. Um, so it's, it's a nice feel. Everything about it was really good. I will be using it. I'll be making reels with it. I enjoy it. Um, stars, uh, oh, thank Abigail you. Thank you for the stars, Abigail and Margaret. Thank you so much. Now, again, 
swatched out on Fabriana so you can really see it. So you, this is like this top half is the 16 color set. And then this one down here was their limited edition um, Inktober set, which is already gone. Um, what could would have gone really fast. It went really fast. Uh, it was fun because it had some different grays and white in it. But from here, from here up is is the old like the original set, and they keep tweaking it. They listen to the community. You can write them. They're very interactive. They're very present. I like them for that. I like them for that. And there's a lot of artists that use it and have resources for it, and you can get information on it. So I have my Fabriano here. I like my Fabriano paper because it really just shows off products really well. I'm going to switch out to some clean water so you can see. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you the brand new spring set of pans. So a lot of artists liked Viviva for the colors because they're dye based. They're super saturated. Dye based paints don't really, um, again, last forever. And they can be staining to the paper, but they're just like cotton candy to the eye. They're so amazing to the eye. Um, but sometimes you want to be able to sell stuff to clients and you want to make stuff that's more permanent. And so Viviva created these sets. Now, here's what's interesting. Um, look, you can gift a friend. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? And then they've got included in this is a nice little note. You know, and also this would let you test it. What's inside of here? Ooh, more information. Here's another card. So this is blank. You could paint this and send this to somebody. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is what this is. So, oh, this is really cool, guys. All right, so in this set, you could give to somebody this micro set. Hey, John, check this out. Oh, well, I'll have to show him this later. This is really cool. Um, it's even got a user guide and everything for you guys to know how to use it. And you could give this to a friend to test out the paint. That's kind of awesome. Oh, thank you, Heather C. So I do, I didn't know that. I'm, I'm seeing this when you guys see it. Um, this one I was going to just do kind of raw with you so that you'd be like, oh, this is her first impression and it's real. It is my first impression. It is my real impression. But, you know, sometimes online, how can you tell? Because we have relationships to companies. Right? Like, I like Viviva as a company. I like Sen LA so much as a company. I like Savoir Faire. And I like the products that they carry. But I have a relationship to the people there. Does that give me bias? I don't know. But I know if I tell you my relationship, then you guys can always make good decisions for yourselves. So, uh, Michelle Brandt is talking about how the sketchbooks are hot press. Yeah, they're very smooth. And the paint sits on them nicely. They've got good sizing. Again, would I Fabriano out later once I used it up? Yeah, but it, it, I wasn't like, oh, no, you, it was the wrong paper for the sketchbook. It was, it was a good paper. Um, it was a lot of fun. I like this um, decorative paper. This is really wonderful here. And what is wonderful about this is these are eco. So they're done with cork, which you can kind of see here. I want to slip it out instead of, I don't want to tear this. I want to slip it out if I can in my unskilled little moment because I'm always you know the nails are pretty but they don't make you more improved in your uh have stun hands do it that's what I should do maybe I have to maybe I do have to open it I don't want to open it but I'm gonna open it because I don't have the skill to just slide but it opened easily all right so here's a swatch card that came into it and then there's a note um to tell somebody this is my pan set and you can mix your colors here. So they've got the included palette like they're doing with um, their other sets. And these are pans in cork, which means this is completely eco-friendly. Now, I'm going to continue to paint acrylic for a while. And I'm going to continue to reclaim paint my waste solids out of my water. And I'm continue to use the golden uh, process for that. But guys, I think eventually... We're going to find ourselves leaning into watercolor as being a more eco-friendly paint as we learn more about plastics and microplastics. I don't know what the future holds. Um, but this, I love to see an art company thinking like this because this isn't going to, this isn't going to become part of a sea turtle's problem. Mm. And, and I have to tell you, I'm not telling you how to think or live, man. There's so many people doing that. I'm going to tell you my opinion and you can hold your opinion and we both can ex live in the same place at the same time without exploding. My opinion is, is that we shouldn't be making problems for the other life that lives here, 
right? We shouldn't be making problems for each other or for for some sea turtles that's just trying to like lay eggs on a beach or for some bird that's just trying to migrate and is depending on a client. We should stop making trouble for them. And so when I say something like this and I think, oh, that's great. This is something that doesn't make any trouble for anybody. Let's swatch it out. Swatch it out. Let's swatch this out, right? I'm going to grab my square. I'm going to sit my coffee and is grab my... Is it only 16 colors offered? Um. Yeah, so on this one... It is 16. They're all 16. On my side, I think it'll be 16. Yeah. We, yeah. We'll have to. We're still working on it. I'm, I'm wishfully speaking, I, I, the, I'm in, I'm fervently interested. Yes. We're, there's, there's cross conversations happening. There's conversations happening and I'm hopeful. Yes. All right. So I'm going to get my little brush out now. What the deal is with watercolor between really good watercolor like the Saint Elier or the Daniel Smith, you know, or the Core or or you know um, Schmicky, is that they're highly pigmented. I like that name. Yeah, Schmicky. I'm saying it wrong. Is he? Yeah, I always say everything wrong. I say. We pull wrong. this out. So we say it. Wrong and all right, together. let's. That's not that's not bad. We're gonna look at the swatch card against my um, the Viva swatches, which I already had. Okay. So then we're going to know, right? We're going to look at both of them. All right. So here's the alizarin crimson and a crimson lake. All right. Seems. So my first thing would be on these two colors. They're beautiful. They're a little close in bias. Mm. Um, and that's that's not uncommon, though, in sets, though, in watercolor sets. This is opera. Oh, I didn't get it activated. I got to get it activated. On pan paints, you kind of got to get them activated with a little bit of water. Activate. Yeah, so here's the opera. A little transparent, but nice. It's definitely an opera. Uh, not every pigment activates in the same manner, by the way. Ooh, cocktail pink is the bomb. That's like a flamingo ready to go to a party. Look at that. Um, this is permanent yellow. Oh, my gosh, John. I see it. They have a color named cinnamon. <gasps> Okay, it's now my favorite set. It's like, they did it for me. <laughs> That's amazing. It's a weird color to be called cinnamon, but I don't care. It's, I don't care. It's now. Because it actually, that's the color of my skin. They must have swatched me. They, they swatched you. <laughs> yep, that's, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Not safe for sunlight consumption. All right, Indian red. And that's okay because they're from India. So, huh? yeah. They mean red from home. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And that's a good color. Uh, light yellow green. Oh, that's nice. So on the first little run of them, a lot of times there's a finish on these things and you've got to uh, activate them to really see the color. Not uncommon. Olive green. Ooh, that's a nice deep color. This is an interesting palette. What do you guys think of the palettes? Okay, Brandon Al Alvey says, are the paints in the pan different yep. from the paints on the sheets? And are these pan paints light fast? Yes, these are light fast. These are pigmented light fast paints. That's, that was the you difference. You can paint with these and sell them to a client. Don't paint with the others and sell them to a client unless you're telling them, I mean, really in the world of NFTs, <laughs> Maybe you could be like, I did it. It's an NFT. <laughs> it lasts, it it's a it's a non light fast AFT. AFT. That's right. It's a non light fast permanent green and Viridian who. So they really love the greens in these. Yeah, these are light fast. These um, you know, are will also perform like watercolors. Um, they don't have a lot of fillers. They don't have a lot of the problems that you would expect. They're actually pretty reasonable in watercolor terms of a, yeah. in price. Oh, I like Periwinkle. And guys, there's one named Cinnamon. I know. I need to, before you guys buy them all, I need to buy some because <laughs> when else am I going to have a paint with my name on it? Probably Sam. What am I saying? <laughs> We're working on it. I forget who I am sometimes. Who are you? I don't know. I don't know who I am. There's the cobalt. And that's actually pretty true. I'm pretty familiar with cobalt, and that's pretty true. We're doing it for the fame. 
We're doing it for the fame, for the clicks, for the likes. I mean, I do okay. Turquoise blue. Ooh, ooh, I love that color. This is a nice set. It is. I like the colors. Yeah, I'm, and here's what's also nice is that the um, what's swatch the card is really good. It's a good paper on the swatch card, so it's I don't have to swatch and swatch. I want to see swatch. how deep the car, the pan is there. These are full pans. So I would expect something like this in the cork, which is really cool. Um, I haven't seen where they sell the individual pans for refills yet. I'm sure they'll get there. Um, just because people will be like, that's like you know, a thing that they'll want or because you'll have a color. You'll be like, oh, I really like cocktail pink and cinnamon is like, it just makes me think of my favorite artist online <laughs> and I use it all up. And then I like the turquoise blue. Well, you know, you might go through some colors sooner than others. If you have painted with me for a minute, you would know that you could squeeze out two paint into these from other lines of paint once the cork is empty and reuse it. But I mean, at least, you know, you're not like messing with the environment. All right. I love how the paints and kits are made by hand by women in India. I love that, too. Um, I love that this is a small-owned business. I love that it's family-based. Um, I have always enjoyed my interactions with the owners um, and everyone working at their company. Uh, they have a really great design team about to, like, kick off. If you go on Instagram and search uh, the Viva color sheets of Viva, you'll probably be seeing some of the other like amazing, I don't have everybody's name memorized yet, but I, I will have it memorized. Um, but there's like some amazing artists that are going to be advocating for the company because we like to advocate. Yeah. Right. We're not like on retainer. It's because, you know, it's like me and Sao Affair. I have a cake for them because I like to advocate for them very much. I like to advocate for Viva. I really like them. I think they have a good energy. I think the company has a good heart. And really anymore, I think that that's important. I'm going to see if now that I've gotten the ha ha. See, it just needed to activate. I thought the opera would be like that. There you go. Now we can see the opera. Oh. There we go. Just had to get it going. All right. Now, we had swatches earlier. So what's the difference between dye-based paints and pigment-based paints? What is the difference? Just a little more saturated. Do I think with... Uh, wetting my pans ahead of time and we'll be seeing this as I paint with the pan set and you'll be getting you'll be hearing from me more and more um, on the one minute videos um, do I think I'll be able to get into this load I think it's just super easy to do with the Viva color sheets here's what I would personally do I would do some of the painting in my archival paints and then I would do weird finishing pops in the Viva um, it's something we do like with opera pink and acrylic paint or an oil paint. Like sometimes you'll have it like the painting will be carried by a lot of very light, fast pigments. And then you might do a saturated bit of color as a pop of focus. And then you just varnish and finish. And, and that's another thing you need to think of too is that you can, there's varnish for watercolor now. So you can protect it. You can varnish it and you can put it beside, behind museum glass and extend the life of the work. I did that with my Copic markers. You can extend the life of the work. Hmm. You know, again, is it 150 years? No, but that's a museum person's problem. <laughs> and maybe you will be a museum person's problem in the future. I just intend to enjoy my art experience right now where I am right now. Yeah. Um, I see Sandy's in the house saying hi to everyone. Um, and Nadeus is saying that they feel like it's a thin slice. I think what it is is that, you know, and I can talk to the company about it. If, if, if it goes down into the cork fairly deep, it would be an, I don't want to pull them out. Um, and again, I'm going to be painting with them for the uh, reels and TikTok and also for shorts hair. Um, I'll let you guys know what the usage is on it. I've gotten a lot out of their... They're color sheets. Yeah. What like a lot. Anecdotally, she has painted a lot with all of the art materials she's gotten, and mm -hmm. we haven't had to refill them, uh, you know, like. Often? I, I think maybe one color. So say I'm making another little color here. Because I don't want to say it all, but not much. And then I guess I would clean it up by, like, getting it wet and then wiping it off. Is the theory, the theory, which I just tested. 
with no plane. I'm glad that worked out. <laughs> I would also probably use a misting set um, on these to activate them normally. I would probably, let me close this up. I, how I would normally activate these is I would probably come through with my mister and just activate my pans. Mister, mister. Not just like kind of come through and brush water. I would just activate them before a painting session. And I'll, I'll, and I'll do this and then I'll test them on the paper so you can kind of see what I mean and um, kind of give them a comparison. What do you guys think? I think this is pretty fit. Uh, pretty oh, good. so this is really good. The Frugal Crafter, which is Lindsay, um, a very good channel to check out for uh, reviews and product reviews, um, popped one out and it was thin. Oh. So if you want to see how thin, totally go by and check, uh, just in general, check the Frugal Crafter out. Mm -hmm. Frugal Crafter was one of the first YouTubers that gave me a hand when I was a baby tuber. <laughs> Now, I'm not, I feel like a baby tuber still, but I'm not. So I have to act all grown up and be responsible and adult and stuff. But back when I was a baby tuber, Lindsay helped me out. It's a really lovely person. Mm. All right. So let's look. And these have activated a little bit. Let's see them on the paper right. and then we'll call it a day. So I'm going to kind of wet my paper a little bit. Oh, yeah. Lots of people like, oh, Diane was just like, I got the travel kit. Did you get the, tra yeah, the travel kit was super fun. All right, so there's the bloom on that. Not quite core, but good bloom. And I'm going to just continue to. So, so I can get a decent pigment load out here. Let's get into this verding, which should be quite a dark color. All right. Yeah, so I can get a pretty good dark going here. Get into my opera, which I had a little trouble, you know, in the beginning. But once I got it activated, it was really wonderful. I think I have to test the cinnamon. <laughs> I would think so. Oh, that's actually, that's a, like, if you're trying to shortcut doing a, a fair skin tone, that's a very nice convenience color. And then I'm going to go over to the uh, palette I have in my travel kit and do kind of a similar swatch. And hopefully this gives you guys an idea. Um, you know, I do have an affiliate link, but really, honestly, it's off. I'm doing okay. Everything is okay. <laughs> if it's useful, use. If it's not, never worry about it. Always use these as a way to say, oh, hey, this is a good, this is a good thing for me. Or, you know, this is the right thing for me. Or, no, this isn't the, the right thing for me. Okay, so these are kind of roughly the equivalents. So I'm going to get my Viridian. You know, this is a little biased yellow and this is a little biased blue, but here's what. That's pretty good saturation comparison, isn't it? That's not bad between those two. And then I'm going to get my peacock blue out. Now, it's a deeper blue. I would say this has got some wow to it that I just really love. And, and there isn't a blue in the set, the spring set. That doesn't mean in the regular set that it isn't as wow. I'm probably going to get myself the regular set and give that a go just to look at it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, check my um, magenta. You know? So I'd say, like, color-wise, I really like the opera. The magenta is, is very deeply pigmented, but I really like the opera. So I would say I I'm definitely happy with both. I, I would have, in my <laughs> own personal studio, I'm going to have probably all the things. <laughs> to be really honest. I'll probably grab the other set of the permanent ones because I travel a lot, and I can't travel without uh, travel colors. I can't fly unless I'm... I have That's flying true. anxiety, and John will tell you the whole time he's been married to me, I have to art the entire time I'm flying. And then the um, uh, airline attendants are always so sweet because they're like, oh, you're an artist. I can't talk to them because I'm freaking out, right? Like, I can't even be like, thank you for liking my artwork because I'm like, oh, I'm just going to draw. It's all going to be fine the whole way through the flight. So mm -hmm. this is really good for me. Yeah, I really like this. I'm, any, like, turbulence? I'm, I'm happy with this in my life. You know, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy with this. I think this would be like pop a rubber band on it. I, you know, and have to see how it rides in my purse and how it, it lives in the reality of my art life, which is not curated and kind of is crazy and messy and insane. Um, 
see how it holds up. But again, I'll continue to give feedback. And here's the other thing. And this is me. This is, I'm, I imagine it's everybody, but this is especially me. If you try a product and you have something good to say about it, say it in the Art Sharp official group. If you try a product and you have some negative feedback, as long as it's not inappropriate negative, like as long as it's professional feedback, share it in the Art Sharp group. If you know, it, it, sometimes you guys let us know when an entire batch of paint may be bad. We've actually helped companies figure out that they had a batch of paint go bad yeah. because we talk to each other, because we share our consumer experiences. So if you do decide to get these, you know, and you're going along, you know, definitely let me know when you think of it. You know, I've got watercolor videos. Uh, <laughs> LLA for James was the first YouTuber that I watched not saying how long ago. I'm not saying how, I'm not saying that I was here since the elephant <laughs> was uploaded to YouTube, but I've been here a minute. Yeah. No, I mean, cause if you count the, okay, so this is how old my channel is. This channel that you guys are on right now used to be the place I uploaded the baby videos for grandparents to see, which are all now private. Mm -hmm. And then, and, cause I didn't want to, when we started the YouTube channel, I didn't want to, I didn't want to try to figure out how to make a whole new channel. And I had this one and it was like honey bee mama, mm -hmm. which I had really liked. And, um, and so I had it and then I was uploading videos to it. And then they were like, uh, do you want an actual channel? And then, and then they were like, oh, we can't because your channel's so old. <laughs> so then right. they finally gave me like a name name. So it's now, you know, YouTube, the art Sherpa. Uh, well, that's over on the big channel. This one, not here. This one, not here. This was made recently. The one on the acrylic channel is the one I'm talking about. Right. Where my kids are over there. Crazy stuff. That's how long. That's how long. That's a long time. Yeah. All right. Hi, Nikki. It's so good to see you and just to say hi. And then um, moderator Santa's like, oh, no, where did the time go? But listen, <laughs> guys, it's just fun to test stuff. Um, I... Things are going to be crazy through Acrylic April, but we're going to meet up here. I may have to miss you one week when I'm at NAMTA. Um, I, I may, like, record something and leave. Watch for the one-minute videos. I will try. If I, if I find something weird and fun, I will definitely bring it to you to show you. Um, I'm going to over on the Acrylic channel, once Acrylic April is over, show you some cool paint pens and some really fun stuff you guys might know about. We're going to keep having fun. Watch the short shelves over here because sometimes I'll be dropping something fun and little for you between the big videos. Here's the rule though. I didn't quit making big videos. I'm just also making little ones. Mm -hmm. Both. Not less, just more. So if you see a little one go by, don't be like, oh no! There's no more lives. There is lives. Like over Acrylic April, we have to record those and curate those. And then we stream them off the live service so that you guys can have an organized playlist. And I chat in there live. But that doesn't mean that I've stopped going live live. It just means the only way to get mini books and traceables and everything done for you guys to go through that program is to start doing that work months and months ahead. So, oh, Twix. Oh, I see that was so sad. So that's what's kind of going on in my life. Um, Donna LaPierre says, I love your hair. She did a great job. I need to get brave and just go for it. Yeah, this is Rhiannon at Cutouts. Did this hair. Let's see. I don't know if you can see. It's like. There's a hole in the back of your head. There's not a hole in the back of my head because we did no green. Oh, there's something there's green. No, there's no green. <laughs> okay. Is there? Is it green? <laughs> is this, Do I have a hole? <laughs> Well, whatever. It's at the back of my head, so that's for the easel. <laughs> whatever we did that was questionable ended up back here and everything up here. It's the when the, the green it, screen can see it. It's when the blue and the yellow layer. Oh, because they make an optical green. See, that's you learn the color. That's a color lesson. When colors next to each other, they create, they mix a color. Thank you, Shelly Belly. Thank you. Is that? Are you Shelly Belly like? Shelly Belly or are you just Shelly Belly? That's like a Shelly Bell thing. I, I just knew someone who used to call themselves Shelly Belly and a very tiny icon, so I don't know if it's that person. But if you're not that person, thank you, thank you. And if you are that person, thank you, thank you. And how are you? Well, actually, everyone, how are you? Gosh, I'm so awkward. Um, how long does my hair last? Uh, if I'm willing to wash it in cold water, um, a good six weeks. If I wash it in hot water, I'm definitely faded by the time I come in at four weeks. So, but then it doesn't want to leave my hair. It's a whole, it's a whole journey. It's a, this was 10 hours, but not because the color itself takes 10 hours. It's because it took that long to get this weird cast of blue out of my hair without using bleach on my hair. Cause they remove the color without using bleach. They use um, different products. 
before they get to the bleach, obviously, the roots of the bleach. But I mean, at this point, I, I assume my roots are going to be so white that I won't have to bleach it. I'm just waiting for that moment. Oh, three Heathers. The Heathers are here. Everyone's coming in and I'm going out. All right. So that's what we did. You know, um, things that I liked about this was I love the gift for the friend. Oh, John, did you see the gift? I think you were making coffee. I did not. So this had, I was thinking, I don't know, like, for something in the future, had a little set that was like this. Look. <gasps> oh, a little tiny one. Right? What about that? Yeah. I like talk for to kids them. or something? And then they had little cards in there that you could paint and then give that to a friend. I like so. that. I liked that there was a mixing palette built in for travel. I like that you could write who it belonged to. And I like that it was cork and that the pans were now light fast. Um, and then here's the swatches on those. I like that you could swatch the card. They gave you a swatching card, right? And then on this, I like the weight of it, it not being uh, too heavy. The paper wasn't, again, I'm going to change it out for Fabriano because I'm paper pick, picky, but it is 120 pound paper, um, hot press, and there's 24 sheets in it. So they didn't short you on that. I love the color sheets in here. I love the water pen. And I did love the um, waterproof black pen for line and wash. I was very happy with this set. Um, Heather Jacobs, I'm doing a painting with beads in it and struggling with the beads. How do I make the beads more opaque as I keep losing the color of them doing, due to fading? So is, if it's in watercolor and it's fading, uh, I would have to go, I would go back with um, like an archival paint. I would. Or gouache. Uh, actually, gouache. Go grab some gouache and do your beads in gouache. And then those will be flat and stable and hold the color and you won't have to worry about the fading. And then just know that's a thing. If you, if you do artwork with something that fades, you may lose its vibrancy over time. Um, neon colors can fade. In, like some neon colors fade in two years. Stuff like uh, Holbein and uh, the new upper pink, you know, that might be 15 or 20 years before you start to see color shift on it. Um, but there's still expensive professional paints that will fade, you know. Like, there, there's lots of paints that are not, like, permanent. And if Turner never painted with stuff that was permanent, he was just like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm Now is when I care about the painting, not 100 years from now. That's y'all's problem. And he always had that kind of position, so, you know. Good footsteps. Um, all right, I don't mind sharing my paintings, but I'm a stingy hoarder with supplies. High five to all the people that have trouble sharing their supplies. I'm notorious for it. Yes. I don't share my art supplies well. With the kids, I'm pretty good. No, they have their own supplies. <laughs> and mommy supplies and kids supplies. They're all professional supplies, but, you know, there's stuff that only I'm allowed to touch. All right. You guys be good. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.